Whether you use them regularly or just on special occasions, lighters are incredibly useful, giving you access to fire right at your fingertips. We are going to look at the science behind making fire and the way the three most common types of lighters work, as well as their history. Welcome to Thing Guide, the show where we learn the way things work. The function of a lighter is to make fire, and combustion is a chemical reaction that causes fire. Let's start by looking at what is needed for combustion. It's a chemical reaction. Like any other reaction, it requires certain conditions to take place. The reactants need to be present, as well as some activation energy or heat to start the reaction. These are represented in the fire triangle. Oxygen and fuel are the reactants and heat provides the activation energy. These make up the three sides of the triangle. And to make fire, you need each of them. The oxygen is supplied by the air and the heat and the fuel is provided by the lighter. The different types of lighters have different fuels and methods of supplying the initial heat. We will look at these in detail later on. Combustion is an exothermic reaction, which means it gives out heat. On the graph, we can see that the energy of the reactants is greater than that of the products, meaning overall energy is given out to the surroundings in the form of heat. However, to start off the combustion, some energy needs to be put into the system to initiate the reaction. This energy is needed to break the bonds of the elements involved so that they are free to react. This is called the activation energy and is shown by the hump on the graph. This part of the graph represents the minimum amount of energy required to start the reaction. Below this level of energy, the reaction will not occur. Once the threshold of energy is met, the molecules are free to react by forming new bonds, and this is what gives out energy to the surroundings. We can model the energy changes in the graph using this ball. When the ball doesn't have enough energy to travel up the hump, the reaction fails to start. But when there is enough energy to go over the hump, the ball makes it all the way to the products. This represents a successful start to the reaction. Take note of how fast the ball rolls down the hill. The speed of the ball can be thought of as the energy being given out to the surroundings. As the reaction is exothermic, the energy is transferred to other reactants nearby in the form of heat so they can also react, giving out yet more heat. This creates a chain reaction, which will keep expanding if there is a continuous supply of fuel and oxygen in the right conditions. This is why forest fires can be so devastating, as they'll keep growing if there's enough material to burn. The way the activation energy is generated is one of the things that differs between the different types of lighters in this video. Let's look at them now. This is one of the most common types of lighters, seen in many makes and models around the world. The lighter contains a section to store the fuel, which in this case is butane, and a nozzle to release it into the air. Butane is a very good option for the fuel as it provides a steady flame. When pressurised, butane is a liquid, but when the valve is open, the butane quickly evaporates into gas due to the drop in pressure. The butane gas is very flammable and it can ignite with the smallest spark which is exactly what is needed in a lighter. The way the spark is made in this lighter is due to ferrisium, which most people mistakenly refer to as flint. It's an alloy of iron and cerium, which is a rare metal. When ferrisium is struck or scraped against the surface, usually hardened steel, small bits of it are released. These pieces oxidise rapidly in the air due to the frictional heating. This produces a spark. These sparks are at an incredibly high temperature, reaching above 3000 degrees Celsius. This heat provides the activation energy for the reaction. At the same time that the roller is being spun, a button is pressed. This opens the valve allowing the butane to be released. At this point, all three elements required for the fire are present. The butane fuel is mixed with the oxygen in the air and the heat is provided by the sparks of ferrisium so the lighter stays on until the button is released, which closes the valve controlling the release of butane. This shuts off the fuel, cutting out the flame. Next up is the piezoelectric lighter. The only real difference with this type of lighter is the cause of the initial spark. They utilise a piezoelectric crystal. These crystals produce a high voltage when they have a force applied to them. The way they do this is due to the orientation of the crystals which don't have a centre of symmetry. Let's look at this quartz crystal to see how it works. 
Quartz is made up of silicon and oxygen. Here the red circles represent silicon, which is slightly positive in charge, and the blue represents the oxygen, which is slightly negative in charge. Right now the crystal is balanced, as the average position of the negative charges is in the same place as the average position of the positive charges. But look what happens when they are squeezed. The average position of the positive charges has shifted up and the average position of the negative charges has shifted down, meaning there is a potential difference across the crystal. When hooked up to two wires, it forms something similar to a battery, where charge flows from one end to the other. In the lighter there is a small gap in the circuit, meaning the charge has to jump from one wire to the other. This produces a spark, and just like that, you have electricity at your fingertips. If you want to learn more about piezoelectricity, check out Steve Moll's video on the subject in the cards above. Or if you want me to make videos on other devices that use this effect, such as sonar and microphones, please comment below. This form of generating sparks is also used in most gas stoves to ignite the fuel. Pushing the button to generate the spark also opens the valve to release the butane fuel. So like before, all elements that are needed to start the fire are present. Now let's look at Zippo style lighters. These lighters differ in the choice of fuel and the method of its delivery. They use a wick which is surrounded by cotton soaked in petroleum distillate fuel. The wick absorbs the fuel pulling it through the lighter which is ignited in the same way as the spark wheel lighter. The whole assembly is encased in a sleeve which can be removed to top up the fuel. Some additional features are that the flame is windproof due to the placement of these holes. These lighters don't need any valves to deliver the fuel, so they stay on until they are extinguished by closing the lid which deprives the flame of oxygen. All the lighters we have looked at feature springs in their designs. If you want to know more about how springs work, please check out my video linked in the cards above or in the description below. Alternatively, if you want to know how toasters work, check out my previous video linked in the same places. Now let's look at the history of lighters. Matches held the title as a tool of choice for fire starters for a long time since their invention. In the 16th century, devices similar to guns used gunpowder to ignite rags. However, they were reserved only for the nobility as they were very expensive and dangerous. However, the first recognisable lighter was created by a German scientist called Johann Doberiner in 1816, where the fuel of choice was hydrogen, which was passed over platinum causing an energetic chemical reaction. This device did have some success, but lighters didn't really take off until after the discovery of ferrocium in 1903. This paved the way for modern lighters, as they could be made cheaply and in a portable form factor. The Zippo lighters came soon afterwards, starting out in 1923. Butane became the fuel of choice in the 1950s, replacing naphtha which was known to be stinky and to have an unsteady flame. Piezoelectricity was actually discovered around the 1880s by the Curie brothers, but it wouldn't start to be used in lighters until the 1950s. Recently, rechargeable battery-powered lighters have come to market, which use plasma to light objects. What do you think is next for lighters? Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and comment below on what video you want next.